second to Neil Kenny with Think Multi Family going live just a few minutes late on Be Live. Little technical difficulties. Like normal. Right? <laughs> so we are joining Dan Hanford tonight. We have lots to talk about, but first we want to hear since we just went live with Dan, we didn't have any time to catch up. How are things going for you and your family, Dan? They're going very well, going very well. So it's been, uh, when you have four children, it can be a little bit hairy and, and hectic, especially oh, this on. time of year with kids start, with a school start and everything. Yes, we think it's hairy with two kids. So yeah. imagine four <laughs> kids. Oh, we yes. saw your you saw your little kids actually opening it up. Uh, two of your kids opened a bank account the other day. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah, I actually told them uh, a while back. I said, you know, Daddy wants to get you a, get you to, to open up a bank account, but you have to save up at least one hundred dollars before we do that. And so they did. They both saved up their money, and they have a hundred dollars. And so we went down. We actually have our banks all in the Greenville, South Carolina market, even though I'm located here in in Columbia, South Carolina. But they have uh, they have all of our bank accounts and everything. So I was up there last Friday, just spending some time in the Greenville with the family before they got back to school this week. And uh, and so just stopped by the bank and uh, had both Caroline, my eight year old, and uh, Caleb, our six our seven year old, excuse me, uh, opening up their their very first bank accounts. They were both very excited about that. So I'm hoping they were smart enough not to make you a co-signer on the account. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they made Danae and I both be the co-signers on the account, but. Uh, you know, it's 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 uh it's it's a different day and age that we live in. You know, because I remember you know growing up and you know getting my first bank account, and you know you didn't have the easy access to the funds as you do nowadays. And you know now when I'm paying them, you know their uh their their their, their weekly allowance instead of giving them cash, I can just transfer it between accounts online. You yeah. know? Yeah. So it makes it a lot easier for them to build up that savings. And you know on the way home from Greenville, we even had a conversation with them about you know what does it mean to invest. You know and um, I was putting my my my, uh, my seven year old son to bed that night, and he goes, "Daddy, I want to invest." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "Good, good." Well, and then I told him, I said, "Well, the next deal we have, I said, I'll let you invest a little bit of money in that one." So I'm sure he will enjoy some of the returns that I'll get off of that. Because I told him, I said, "You know, you put that hundred dollars in one of these apartment complexes that we're buying." You know, five years later, it could be two hundred dollars. And of course, his eyes get really big, and he's like, "Wow!" You know, so that's pretty exciting. Well, I know he was. I bought this is probably man. I don't even remember. Close to a year ago, the the white with a red stripe Audi R8. He, your son was eyeballing. So he's gonna have to invest probably a little more than hundred bucks to get that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's compound effect. It's, 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 it's it starts of there. For it to come, come. Yeah. Well, and I want them to understand too that you know, yes, there's a point of time of saving and having savings, but just saving to save it is, doesn't make any sense. You know, you got to save it to invest it. Not just to save it, you know. You gotta. So I want them to learn how to grow that up, you know, even 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 in small increments now, and and see some of those easy quick wins, and you know, hopefully he he obviously continues and wants to invest more and more, and uh, and turns into his daddy and wanting to invest in. Uh, oh no, of come on. we don't want him to turn into his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not all the qualities, but Maybe all the good qualities you have. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, we were on, we had a call with uh, Coach Trevor today too, so he said hello. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I enjoy having conversations with Trevor and uh, looking forward to con connecting with him again at your your conference coming up in September. Yeah, he yeah. said he didn't enjoy talking to you in general. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, hey, you know. For watching us live, Mark only teases people he really likes. The more he teases <laughs> them, the more he likes them. Just so you know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Mark, Mark always has these little uh, ways about him to, you know, make you feel special. So <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, cool, man. We're super excited to have you come to our event September 7th and 8th in Dallas. So won't be quite as hot probably September, so we'll be all right maybe. But, um, you know, you're, you've are you been an entrepreneur pretty much your entire life, right? Um, I know your story a little bit, but maybe just briefly kind of what was your first business you started? Well, uh, with the first successful one or? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's start there. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously, you know, growing up in, in high school and things like that, did you know different odds and ends and things like that, you know, mowing lawns and did a pressure cleaning business and sold cut code knives in high school and various things like that, and uh, and so you know, one of the things that I that I that I did when I was you know, when I'm, one of the things I'm, I'm always a cognizant of is, is my surroundings and and different problems that people have to try to you know solve those problems by you know, creating a product or a service that can, can, can create a solution to that problem. 
And so one of the one of the most successful businesses that I still have today is a online business. And I started it because and I'm, I'm a chiropractor by trade. And so I have a, uh, a, a degree in chiropractic. And when I was going through chiropractic college, one of the things that all the students needed in the first quarter of schooling was a spine model. And so one of the things that, you know, I you know saw was is a lot of the students were complaining that the spine model in the university was in the university bookstore is like one hundred and ninety dollars. And so I was like, I wonder if I can get that thing online a little bit cheaper. And so went to the bookstore, found the manufacturer's name, Googled the information, actually found a distributor of the product who is actually to this day still my number one competitor mm -hmm. and I called them up and said, hey, you know, I, I'm wondering what I can get this spine model for if I put an order of 20 spines and an order of 20 spines. And they said, well, if you can put an order together of 20 spines, we'll sell it to you for $65 and that will include the shipping. And so me, I'm thinking, well, that's pretty cool. I'll sell it for maybe, you know, $70. And I actually sold it for $69.95 mm -hmm. and went around the student body and uh, every class and just kind of, you know, made an announcement in front of the, of the classes. And, you know, of course, you know, asked permission from the teachers. And the first week I had an order of 80 with cash up front from these students to, of these spine models. Yeah. And so now I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if I could actually go to the manufacturer directly and cut out the middleman. And so instead of just stopping at the distributor, I went one level further and found the manufacturer and ended up working to deal with a manufacturer where not only could I sell that one spine model, uh, I could sell over 2000 of the products that they had in their in their, um, their their catalog at the time and get it at their highest dealer discount because of the quantity of, of spines and not just the spines, but the, the dollar amount that I was able to generate. And I was able to get the price down to forty two dollars and forty eight cents. And I'll never forget that. Because I remember her saying, the lady that was my rep at the time saying, well, we can get you that spine, including the shipping for $42.48. And and I was like, wow, you know, so now it went from, a, you know, a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars. And from there, started to build out a website, put it, put it I started things, selling things on eBay first and then started my own website, poured money into Google. And to this day, continues to, re continues to generate seven figures of revenue. And it's helped me be able to open up my my, my clinics that I have, I started with the chiropractic clinic and then went into medical clinics. And so I have those, 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 those clinics that are debt free now because of that original business that got me started into, uh, into the whole success in, in business. That's sweet, sweet, sweet. So, and uh, you know, you have other businesses too, won't go into all the details. Now you can share them at another point in time. But so you look at yourself and say, Hey, you're, you have successful businesses. You've been an entrepreneur for pretty much your entire life for the most part, right? And so why did you turn to real estate, in particular multifamily? Well, I mean, to, to me it was uh, a position of, of paying too much in taxes. So when you have successful businesses and you're spending off a lot of cash, you get taxed pretty high. And so I was at the top tier tax bracket and was paying, you know, paying on a quarterly basis, writing these six figure checks every quarter, you know, having that painful <laughs> signature oh, yeah. on all those checks and was just tired of it. And, you know, ended up having the ability to promote the, at the time I was working really, you know, day to day in my, in my medical clinics that I was running. I have a group of them here in South Carolina and, you know, I was able to turn it over to my COO and promote him to CEO and me be able to step out and, you know, have all of the other day to day operations being managed by a good team that I have that supports me. And, uh, and so I was able to focus full-time efforts in the multifamily space. And the, the main you know, core reason was from the tax side of things to be able to reduce my taxable liability. And it's been uh, a very, very a nice ride. This is now our second full year into the, into the, into the syndication space. And uh, really looking forward to seeing uh, the, 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 the no comma in my taxes this year. Uh -huh. we, we didn't have it. We don't have it the last two years. And uh, people won't believe it, and, and uh, it's a good feeling not to pay any federal. And we don't have any state income tax either. I think well, you know what we should do? This is one of the things you guys should consider doing. You know how like Dave Ramsey has the thing where you know people who like are become debt free. They yeah. call in and have this whole like debt free ruha or whatever. What you should do is is for people who are you know buying multifamily and things like that, they become tax free. Yeah. <laughs> they okay. should have call up and have those kind of parties. That's even yeah. that's even a, a better thing for me. It's uh, it's quite the pleasure to not have to pay that taxes, you know. So, cause I was, I was doing IT before, so similar to you, I don't 
business and had to do quarterly payments and things like that and just would drive me crazy. But but you switched gears a little bit too, not just where you interested in multifamily, you started raising, you know, large amount of capital. And that's kind of one of the things you're gonna refer to. Uh, so Lucas Miller is on as well. He's saying hi, Dan, and Dino's on. So a couple, hey fellas, couple of Denver guys there. Um, if you're watching us live, if you could show us some love and hit the like button or the love button and share this live feed, so that others can also benefit from what Dan is about to share with us. Yeah, and I was just gonna say you're gonna go through a lot more detail, you know, kind of 10 killer strategies for raising capital from high net worth and things like that, but at the fire, at the fire summit. So we won't give everything away here, but kind of, you know, uh, you know, you started raising capital right away. Were you a passive investor first? What was kind of your first investment? Yeah. So it was a, as a passive investor. And that's one of the recommendations that I have for many people is, is, you know, just, just to do what I did and start out as a passive investor, because, you're going to get to the point where you'll, if you eventually want to become the active investor and that sponsor, you're going to get to the point where you're going to under, you're going to start to see how you're treated and it'll help you be able to know how to treat your investors as well. And it's really kind of how I put together my communication with my investors. And at the same time, you know, we have a lot of investors in our group that are active syndicators, but they're using their 401k and self-directed accounts, IRAs to invest in our group because they can't invest in their own deals. Right. And so we do have quite a few of other syndicators, pretty high level ones that, that invest with us as well. And it, it, I think for, for us, it's, it's always nice to see that. And it also bodes well to kind of see, you know, where, where we have gone as quickly as we have and the trust and the, and the credibility that we've built up because I even, I even I had an investor call uh, last week and, you know, the investor said, well, I've been talking to uh, several different people about you and your group. And, you know, I've been, I've been very impressed because everybody has been saying good things about it. Nobody has a negative thing to say about it. And, you know, I think that really is something that we've tried to work very hard on is, is to make sure that our reputation is very solid. And, you know, there's going to be lots of different, you know, strategies and things like that, that I'll share at the event coming up in, in September and looking forward to sharing those strategies from, from a high net worth investor's perspective and, and really kind of deep diving deep into some of those strategies. Yeah. If somebody is watching this live Facebook feed and they are just getting started and they think that they want to get started by raising money, um, what's like one word of advice that you would have? Like, how do they go about getting started? Sure. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of people when they first get started, they, they kind of put this, this number in their head and it's an arbitrary number of how much they think that they can raise. Oh, yeah. And everybody I've talked to, and you guys know this, that has given us that figure, it's, it's never been that high, you know? And, and, and I was the same way. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty too. You know, like I started off thinking I can raise over a million dollars and in my first deal, I struggled to struggle to do half a million. And that was with me putting a hundred grand in my own deal. I mean, right. not my own deal, but in that particular uh, deal. And, uh, and so you have to start somewhere. And I think the biggest thing with raising capital for another person's group or, you know, obviously, you know, co-GP with them on that deal, I think one of the most important things is to start to prime your investors because for me, I came from the, the medical and chiropractic space. And so to go to some of my investors and they're like, well, I thought you were doing medical yeah. and chiropractic stuff. And now all of a sudden you're trying to tell me you're doing real estate. And so for me, it helped to kind of, you know, be able to start the conversations with people because one of the things that I see a lot of times is, is that people don't start to raise the money until after they have the deal. And that's the wrong time to do it. Yeah. Like you need to be confident enough with the ability, with your ability to raise funds before you actually get a deal. And um, we even we had a, we had a buyer call um, this past Monday on a deal. We're looking at a fifty-one and a half million dollar project that we're working on right now. And we're going to have to raise about sixteen million in that project. And one of the questions that the seller had for us was all about the equity. Like, where oh, yeah. is your equity coming from? Are you confident that you can raise it? We got a ten thirty-one group over here that already has the money, and we got another group over here that has a fund. And so, yeah. tell me why I should give you the deal and award you the deal, um, even though they like us and you know we yeah. don't have a strong offer. They want to make sure that they can actually get that deal closed too. So it helps from a confidence level standpoint when you're trying to you know acquire a property and tell these sellers where your money is actually coming from. And you know the good thing about our group is we always tell them like we've never got a deal under contract that we couldn't close. Yeah. And uh, and so that also that that definitely helps as well. But from an initial starting standpoint, definitely trying to you know co GP with another group and getting that experience of just talking with investors and priming your investors, I think is very crucial. Yeah, I think it's an excellent point. I think the, 
the idea of priming them and letting them know what you're up to. So it's not a surprise when you have a deal. But I think the other thing, frankly, that you've really been able to to somewhat uh, master is giving back value to other people. And um, it doesn't come, you can't just sit back and you're busy, you're doing things, you're on, you're doing webinars all the time. So people need to realize it takes action to do this and you can decide, hey, I don't wanna put the effort in and that's okay, but don't expect to get the results that Dan's getting if you're not willing to put some effort in. Yeah, I would definitely say that providing value to other people is, is probably the number one thing that I've done to grow my investor database. And you know, obviously I have the group, the multifamily investor nation. And right now we're, we're getting to be close to about 13,000 people across our meetup groups and our YouTube channel and our you know email list and things like that, that we've grown with the weekly webinars and stuff and our podcast. But the biggest thing is, is, you know, I'm, I'm providing value to other people and, and I get phone calls from people all the time that, you know, they're, they're, they're thanking me for teaching them for the last six months via my webinars, my podcast, and I've never even met them before. Yep. And then they call me up and they're like, I just feel really confident with you and trust you. And I had a, I had a dinner the other day with an investor and she said, uh, I was trying to talk to my husband about the multifamily stuff so he could understand it. And, you know, I just kept on putting your podcast and your webinars in front of him. And when it came to investing in one of your deals, you know, I, I talked to him, my husband about it. And he said, I really, I really trust Dan and his group and I think we should do it, you know? Yeah. And I think that all goes towards that whole providing value to other people. And, you know, after every phone call with my investors, I tell them, I'm like, this is my personal cell phone number. You have any questions, you have any issues, you have direct access to me. So you don't have to go through somebody else to get me. You don't have to go through anything else. Like there's no, you know, investor coordinator or anything like that. You're going to go through me. So if you have questions about anything, whether you're in one of my deals or whether you're not, feel free to reach out. And I think a lot of people like that, even just from a lifeline standpoint, because I don't get bombarded with a bunch of phone calls from random from these from these from these random people that have questions because they obviously know that I'm I'm busy as well. But right. I think it's that extra level of, hey, I at least have access to him if I ever need it. Right. right. No, I like that. Yeah. And uh, uh, Lennon uh, put something on here too, kind of a, a roadmap, right? He put LP, limited partner, co GP, then GP, right? So that's what a lot of people do. They start a limited partner, they sponsor somebody else that has experience and they go off and do their own deal. You don't have to do that, but it's the way a lot of people have gotten started and it's been, it's worked for a lot of people. Yeah. And I think it just depends on who your investors are and if they're, if they trust you in the level of being able to want to invest in your deal. Cause you know, we, we, one of the things I talk about a lot is, you know, an investor will invest with you if they meet three different criteria. They have to know, like, and trust you. Yeah. And we've heard that before, right? Like, know, like, and trust. You know, you kind of hear that all over the place. But in investor relations, it's all about that relationship piece of it. And so it's know, like, and trust. And the number one piece of that know, like, and trust, it's not like and it's not trust. And those are very, very important pieces. Right. But the very first one is no. Because right. if people don't know you, they never have an opportunity to make the judgment call of whether or not they like or like or trust you. Right. right. And so, and then you you might say, well, I have a lot of people that know, like, and trust me. Yes, but there's also two other levels to this. They have to know, like, and trust you, but they also have to know, like, and trust the deal. Right. And at the same time, they have to know, like, and trust you in that deal. So there's, 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 a, there's a huge triangle going on um, inside of triangles that you have to be meeting that know, like, and trust factor. And it's very important to hit all those things. And I think in the very beginning, if you're you know, going from a, 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 an engineer, IT, medical, whatever it is, into, into real estate, you'll have a little bit of a harder time with that. But if you have some larger investors that can swipe some big checks, then you know, kudos to you. Like you said, there's, there's no problem with it. There's nothing wrong with it. But you definitely want to make sure you have your investors lined up before you did that too. Yeah, love it. So if you liked tonight's Facebook Live with Dr. Dan, we would invite you to join us at the Fire Summit coming up on September 7th and 8th in Dallas at the Weston Galleria. Dan will be there. That's right, he's gonna be one of our speakers and then you can come and network with him and other successful syndicators and speakers as well. Again, that's- I am so glad that they don't have a thumbs down button for the video. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or a finger up. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can check us out at thinkmultifamily.com or check out the Fire Summit at thinkmultifamily.com slash fire summit. If you are interested in coming to the Fire Summit, we'd love to offer you a discount code. That discount code would be 
Facebook 200 for $200 off of your um, tickets or tickets. We would love to see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Bye, Dan. Look forward to seeing you guys in a few weeks. All right. Take Sounds care. Sounds good. Bye-bye.